Example 6 says use table 11.1. .1. Again, that's that table with all the stock information. Suppose you bought $300 of General Electric at a 52-week low and sold the shares at a 52-week high. So ignoring the dividends, what was the profit and loss of the sale of the stock? Again, to find that profit or loss, we need to consider the number of stocks times the sell price minus the purchase price. And that has to be in parentheses. So in this case, it was 300 shares. Let's go ahead and use that table and find out what the sell price was. We're looking at the 52-week high for the sale price. The 52-week high for the sales price, looking at that, looks like I'm getting $31.49. And then let's look at the purchase price was the 52-week low. Looks like I'm getting $19.37 as my low. Let's go ahead and put this into our calculator and see what we get as our profit or loss. I'm getting $3,636. Okay, because that number is positive, we know that it's a profit. If it was negative, it would have been a loss. So this is a profit of $3,636. Again, though, that would be if you could buy and sell it yourself, but you can't. You have to use a brokerage. So this broker charges 2.1% of the total sales price. So again, to find the commission, what we do is we do the number times the sell price times that percentage rate. So in this case, it was 300 shares. The sales price of it was $31.49. And the commission rate is zero point or sorry point zero two one which represents two point one percent commission charge go ahead and throw that into your calculator i'm getting a total of 198 dollars and 39 cents okay so that's what stocks are stocks are you're buying actual ownership within a company Let's move on to the next concept, which is bonds. What are bonds? Bonds, instead of buying part of the company, you are actually loaning the company some money. Okay, so it says when a corporation is, issues stock, it is selling part of their company. So you are actually becoming an owner. When it issues a bond, the corporation is borrowing money from the bondholders. A bondholder lends money to the corporation. Corporations, the federal government, government agencies, states, and cities all issue bonds. These entities need money to operate. For example, the fund of the federal deficit repair roads or build a new factory, so they borrow money from the public by issuing bonds. You might have heard in the news in the, at the last election, and again will be for this election, there will be bonds or potential bonds for education, for example, is one of the things. I always vote yes. What this is, is you're loaning um, all the schools money, and they do pay back all the money that they borrowed plus interest. So it's actually a good investment for the city. It says bonds are usually issued in units of $1,000. The price paid for the bond is the face value. The issuer promises to repay the bondholder on a particular day called the maturity date. So the maturity date's the time at a given rate of interest called the coupon. So the interest rate is called the coupon. Okay. So it says um, here you can read the point of interest here. It says, but assume that a bond with a thousand dollar face value has a 5% coupon in a 10-year maturity rate. So what are we going to use? Well, the one disadvantage of bonds is bonds are simple interest, not compound interest. So the good thing about bonds is they have higher interest rates than way higher interest rates than like savings accounts and banks, okay? But they are simple interest, so it is not compounded. You're only getting interest off the original amount. So it says, uh, assume a $1,000 face value. That's the essentially the loan amount for the company, or this is, if you're the bondholder, that's your investment amount. You gave them $1,000. This 5% coupon, that's your, that's your P, that 5% coupon, that's your R value right there. And then there's a 10-year maturity date, but we have to be very, very, very careful, okay? So we have to look at what they're actually asking for. It says the bondholder collects interest payments of $50 in each of those years. So what they chose was to do T equals 1. This gives you your annual interest. 
And there's two types of questions here. There's going to be some questions that ask for the annual interest or your um, annual payment. Or there's going to be some that are going to say the total. So for instance, here the annual payment was $50. But if we did 50 times 10, that would give us $500. That would be the total interest paid for the entire life of the bond. Plus you would get your $1,000 back.